Hello, I'm Deepak Patel. I'm responsible for the OT and IoT security business here at Zscaler. And in this session, I'll be covering a little bit more in depth as to how we're deploying our zero trust for OT and IoT solutions, specifically around the privilege access use case. So describing this use case, this is about employees or vendors requiring access to your OT systems. What I've drawn here is what's called as a Purdue model of security. This is fairly common in a manufacturing environment to have your setup for your physical processes and how you're doing this using that Purdue model of security. So it's segregated at different layers. At the bottommost layer is what we call as the PLCs and sensors. You have the HMIs and SCADAs are the, the control portion of it. Then you really, the workstation layer is when you're starting to see more of the IT equipment. You'll have historians and things like that. DMZ is where you're connecting that to your corporate environment or the enterprise level, level four and five. And for context of written where the Zscaler solutions exist, as, as part of our Zscaler solution here. All right. So what's happening here? So in the Purdue model, there's really no separation. This is a flat network from level three down to yeah, level zero or one. It's a flat network. It's usually what we call as a control network, meaning your devices are communicating with other systems, whether it's workstations or other devices or unencrypted channels. And there's a lot of expectation about latency and effectively 100% uptime. So when we started looking at this, deploying our solution, we found that the ideal place to deploy this is at the DMZ layer because deploying any agents, even if they look like regular IT workstations, could void warranties, it requires downtime. There's quite a few challenges if you start thinking of deploying agents or deploying any kind of physical appliances in level three or below. So our solution, when you look at the Zscaler solution for privileged access, requires what we call as an OT connector. That's that's deployed at this layer. And this one is, is available as a container. Primarily because when you go into these environments, you won't have a lot of infrastructure to deploy it as VMs. And today, a lot of the industrial edge devices can support Docker container form factors. So when a remote access needs to happen, there's only a few elements that's required. So that means your OT connector that's deployed at the DMZ layer needs to be able to connect to the Zscaler cloud. And how do we connect that? It's, it's just an outbound connection. So if you have any kind of firewall there, the simplest rule that you would configure this, it's only outbound connecting to the Zscaler cloud. That's pretty much it. What happens for the vendor? The vendor is also effectively coming inbound into the Zscaler cloud. Both for the vendor and as well as the employee, the identity that we would choose, the identity platform that you're going to choose is, is a SAML-based provider. This is just uh, big words for saying that it's a modern authentication system that will support SAML and it'll do MFA, all the good stuff that, that's there today in today's identity world. So from a vendor, it's always agentless, meaning they can come without having to deploy any kind of clients, any kind of agents on their devices. So it's an unmanaged device whereas the employee can come from a managed device. So what's the difference? An employee can have a posture check, meaning their device can be checked for stuff, and they can do TCP or UDP. A posture check effectively means you can check for the latest version of CrowdStrike. You can see that that employee's device is compliant with the corporate security policies and make sure that they're not bringing anything malicious into this environment. So for an employee access, you can give more native access, but primarily it's about vendor access. So a vendor would come in about a browser because it's agentless, and there'll be a few tiles based on their SAML attributes as to what they can connect to. So they can effectively say, I wanna to connect to something down here that's already configured from an RDP perspective. Right. So they could say, I wanna to connect to this workstation or a jump host or RDP. We also support SSH and soon we'll add more protocols as well. So the way we are doing this segmentation portion here is when this vendor connects to this, their path effectively traverses, comes to the OT connector. The OT connector then issues what we call as a connection into this RDP or SSH session. So there is that isolation that's maintained. It's RDP SSH within this environment, but when it's really exiting this DMZ, it's already become HTML5. 
So this isolation is what's important going into, going into this environment. So all of this happens naturally within our OT connector. It's a fairly small footprint. You don't require more than a couple of cores and a couple of gigs of RAM to be able to run that. So as we add more capabilities to our cloud, you get the benefit of that. So this is another advantage of deploying a cloud-based solution into your OT environment. There's no forklift that's required. Once you're on that connector, all the new capabilities are going to be delivered through our cloud. So there's no supply chain issues to worry about. I already am working with a lot of customers where they're stuck with a supply chain problem for almost more than a year now, trying to deploy hardware-based solutions for achieving this kind of functionality. Now, when you think about this deployment scenario, this is the only thing that you need to deploy. You probably already have SAML. There's nothing to, to be deployed from a vendor perspective. Your employees already have the Zscaler client connector. So all of this is going to the same single platform, whether it's OT or IT access, and that's where the significant benefit comes from. And to reiterate, this works really well with the Purdue model. You don't have to abandon the Purdue model. In fact, there are lots of concepts of the Purdue model that are still re very relevant. Whatever the Purdue model was talking about deploying as an on-prem solution, we're doing that and a lot more in a zero trust environment to achieve much better security. So if you have systems that can't be patched or they can't be patched as often, Providing this isolated access for your vendor, making it seamless for the vendor to be able to come out a browser and access this is what's really working out well for a lot of, lot of our customers. I hope this gives you a, a quick and short overview of how this solution is technically deployed. You can avoid a lot of that segmentation challenges that you typically run with like VPNs and firewalls. This is far more simplistic to deploy. I hope you, you get in touch with us too when you get to your journey about zero trust for OT, where you're trying to do this uh, privileged remote access for your users, as well as vendors. Thank you.